Hi, this is Mike Megali and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 52 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating challenges and treatment strategies for guide catheter engagement, wiring, as well as performing the double kiss crash bifurcation standing technique. The patient was an elderly man with progressive angina. He did have previous coronary bypass with lima to LAD, radial to obtuse marginal, radial to posterior descending artery. He also had a healed type B aortic dissection. He was referred for PCI of a distal left main osteal circumflex bifurcation lesion. There was a significant lesion at the origin of both vessels. The LAD was significant because two large diagonal branches were originating before the LAD occlusion that was then supplied by the lima, and there was also a significant amount of uh, lateral wall territory supplied by the circumflex. Given the complexity of the lesion, we obtained femoral access with a 45 centimeter long 8 French uh, pinnacle destination sheath. But then we had significant difficulty engaging the lesion. Um, we were unable to engage despite using an EBU 3.5 and an EBU 4.0 guide catheter. And as you can tell from the image quality, the patient was uh, fairly large, requiring higher radiation dose and less angulated views. We were finally able to engage with the JL4 catheter, inserted a Xeon blue guide wire into the circumflex and over it then a Keraval microcatheter. And we then inserted a 300 cm long Grand Slam stiff guide wire to use it as a rail to advance a, a regular guide catheter because obviously the JL4 is not a good guide catheter for performing complex coronary interventions due to poor support. After doing this, we were then able to advance the 8 friends EBU 40 guide catheter into the ostium of the left main. We then, however, had a lot of difficulty advancing a guide wire in the LAD, in part because of the angulation and in part because of the significant, significant osteal LAD lesion. We used a Xeon Blue, SUO 3 wire, but both failed to cross into the LAD. We then did uh, multiple attempts uh, using a Keravel microcatheter and um, a Fielder FC guide wire that were also unsuccessful. And then we did use a twin pass dual lumen microcatheter in an attempt to go to the LAD once again without success. But eventually, uh, using the Fielder wire um, we were and the twin pass, we were eventually able to advance the Fielder FC guide wire into the LAD and then uh, a switch it uh, for a soft workhorse Sium Blue guide wire over the Caravel microcatheter. So we finally now have um, wiring of both the LAD as well as the circumflex and we're now able to start our intervention. There was lesion calcification so we predilated with the 2.5 and 3 millimeter non-compliant balloons and then um, used the 3.0 angioscalp in both vessels. There was still a little waste that's why we perform uh, repeat uh, um, dilations. There was also difficulty advancing equipment into the circumflex, so we predilated uh, the proximal circumflex with a 2.5 millimeter balloon. We then did intravascular ultrasound into the circumflex. There was calcification, but it was not circumferential, and there was a significant lesion in the proximal circumflex, but there appeared to be adequate vessel preparation prior to placing the stent. This is the LAD wire and this is the left main without significant disease. We did however have a dissection in the circumflex uh, because of the aggressive uh, predilation efforts. We decided to do the double kiss crash technique here for multiple reasons. One is we had a big dissection to the circumflex so we didn't want to have any chance of uh, losing wire into that vessel by stenting first into the LAD. And, um, there was also similar size uh, in uh, the distal vessel, both in the main vessel, LAD, as well as the circumflex. The DK crash, which is described in more detail in another video, uh, has several steps, but the key concepts are to place a stent into the side branch. There is a balloon placed in the main vessel, ready to crush the stent. The stand is deployed, the side branch balloon is removed, and then the main vessel balloon is used to crush the side branch 
deployed stem. The next step is to rewire, ideally through the proximal strut, into the side branch and then perform the first kissing balloon inflation. We then perform deployment of a stand over the main vessel, sized for the distal vessel. Then uh, pot, proximal optimization, is performed proximal in that vessel. And then the side branch vessel is rewired. And then the second kissing balloon inflation is performed, followed by a final pot and a nice final result. So this is what we did. This is a 25 by 38 millimeter drag looting stand in the circumflex and there is a 3.0 millimeter balloon into the LAD. The stand was deployed into the circumflex and then the balloon of the circumflex was removed and uh, the 3.0 millimeter balloon in the LAD was used to crush the recently deployed stand into the circumflex. After that, however, we did have a lot of difficulty advancing a guide wire again into the circumflex. We tried um, uh, using the twin pass microcatheter with the field RFC that wasn't successful initially, but eventually using the field RFC we were able to advance a guide wire into the circumflex and although a 2.0 millimeter balloon would not cross, we used a 1.0 millimeter Sapphire Pro that successfully crossed uh, through the circumflex stand struts. Then we were able to then deliver the 2.0 millimeter balloon into the circumflex ostium and then perform the first kissing balloon inflation, following which we did have a um, good flow in the circumflex as well as the LED. We then deployed a 275 by 18 millimeter stand from the left main into the proximal LAD. And then um, we rewired once again with a filter FC guide wire and performed the final kissing balloon inflation with 2.5 balloon in the circ and 3.0 into the LED that uh, uh, did provide a nice result. We did IVOS that showed some stand under expansion into the circumflex and that's why we uh, post dilated the circumflex with the larger balloon and after doing that we did have a nice final result with good flow in both the LAD as well as the circumflex there was some diffuse disease more distally but we decided to not pursue any further treatment and the patient did have actually a nice result with relief of his angina so multiple lessons from this case the first one is that when there is difficulty engaging with a guide catheter, an alternative strategy is to use a diagnostic catheter to engage the vessel and advance a stiff wire like the uh, Iron Man or the Grand Slam or the Mailman and then use that wire to deliver the guide. The second is that for left main or any other bifurcation or lesion that is calcified, it's critical to prepare the lesion well with meticulous uh, balloon angioplasty, possible atherectomy, to ensure that the stents will subsequently be expanded. And then when it comes to the double kiss crash technique, the challenge we had here is failure to rewire. We had a lot of difficulty advancing a wire after the side branch stand was crushed. And this was solved by doing the proximal optimization technique using the twin pass dual loop microcatheter and the field RFC polymer jacketed guide wire. We then had difficulty advancing a balloon through that stand and that was addressed by uh, using the Sapphire Pro balloon. An alternative strategy would have been to rewire because sometimes the uh, wire may cross under a stand strut making crossing with the balloon more challenging. Thank you.